Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to worship. My name is Pastor Harold Banachek, and on behalf of Pastor Alicia Helsher and St. Peter's, it's good to see you all. One thing to note is our internet is down here at St. Peter's, so we don't have live stream happening right now, but we are recording it, and we're going to post it up. So if you're watching it online, it's probably after the fact, but that's okay. We're glad to have you here. You can virtually be here in time-wise. That's the amazing gift of technology these days. A couple notes before we begin worship. One is, um, um, just a reminder, the Valley Metanoia Network, that is our August giving focus. Uh, Pastor Edwin had his little ministry moment last week. You can go on our YouTube video channel and see that video again. There's handouts in the narthex to learn more about how to help us move to that $2,000 we're trying to raise to help them redo the floor at the center that they are renovating. Um, also, tonight there is a pickleball social at 7 p.m. in Meadow Lake, so if you are a pickleballer or if you're just interested in pickleball, please join and be part of that group. That sounds like a great time. And the bell choir and the, the, our, our voice choir are beginning their rehearsals this week. Bells are at 4 and the choir is at 5.30. So if you're already in that loop, you're great. If you want to join in, uh, just show up at those times. And also, just to note that, you know, we have a nice parking lot. You know, you can actually see where you're parking now in the different lanes. That's amazing. So thank you to Steve and all the other people in our building committee and everybody who's keeping all of these fellowship hall remodels going. I want you to know that the 28th of October is when we're going to do a dedication for the fellowship hall. It'll be a morning dedication on Saturday so that we can invite our Elm Lane neighbors and various other people in our larger community to be part of that. So put that on your calendar. That's Reformation weekend, so it seemed fitting to dedicate it as part of Reformation. And finally, there's little black sign-in booklets in your pews. Sign in, let us know you're here, pass it down to the neighbor next to you. Well, one thing we want to do before we kind of hop into our prelude is we want to install our teachers and our school board uh, for St. Peter's. Uh, so if I can invite our teachers and our school board to join me up front and invite you to, to line up here up front. We are again blessed with just amazing teachers and very discerning people to help make decisions on behalf of just growing and walking with and teaching our youth and our community. And so we're very thankful for all of you for being here. The names of our teachers and our school boards are up here on the screen. And we would like to offer a blessing upon you all as you get ready to start school. So we begin. Our Lord who came among us as a servant calls us to faith in a life of loving service to our neighbor. You stand among us as ones called into special service as teachers to children at our St. Peter's Lutheran School, and as board members who help and guide our school in its purpose and mission for the children of our community. A reading from 1 Peter, and this is from the translation of The Message. 1 Peter reads, Most of all, love each other as if your life depended on it. Love makes up for practically anything. Be quick to give a meal to the hungry, a bed to the homeless, cheerfully. Be generous with the different things God gave you, passing them around so all get in on it. If a word, let it be God's word. If help, let it be God's hearty help. That way, God's bright presence will be evident in everything through Jesus, and he'll get all the credit as the one mighty in everything. So in the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourselves to the roles you have been called through St. Peter's Lutheran School, and if so, please respond. I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Oh, that was nice and bold. All right, turn around, face the congregation. People of God, will you support and pray for our teachers and our school board? And if so, please respond. We will, and we ask God to help us. We will, and we ask God to help us. Thank you. You can turn around one more time, and we'll close with a prayer. God, bless our school teachers with the gifts of compassion, patience, joy, and understanding. Grace them with your light and life to pass on to their students. And bless our school board with discernment and the gift of seeking you in the work they do. God, bless all those in our community and beyond who will work with, teach, and coach children this year, who will walk alongside and encourage parents and caregivers 
Give us all the gift of making space for the other this school year. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, let's give thanks to God for our school teachers, our school board, and our students. Thank you, guys. Well, as they're returning to their seats, I invite you to take a deep breath of God's spirit as we begin worship. Breathe in that spirit that gives you life and and vitality and prepare your hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to rise as you're able, as we continue with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We sing our gathering song, Gather Us In, verses 1, 2, and 4. <laughs>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and for our ministry moment today, we get to hear a little bit about Rally Day from Scott Kane. Good morning, everybody. So if you did not know, next week is a pretty busy week for the youth and family program. Starting us off, we have youth-led worship at 8.30 and 10.45. Uh, here you guys get to experience worship from our youth. Uh, we have about 12 students that are going to uh, just help in all the different aspects of worship. Uh, we actually have two students that are going to speak about their time in VBS and their time at Rainbow Trail this summer. Um, again, that is at 8.30 and 10.45, but in between that, at, not, uh, at 9.30 is Rally Day, like Pastor Harold just said. Uh, that is going to be our kickoff event for Sunday school. Uh, September 3rd is going to be our actual first uh, week of Sunday school, of the new kind of Sunday school program that we got going on. A new Sunday school team has been kind of formed to help make this new thing happen. But for, for next week specifically, we're going to have uh, a themed kind of event slash party called Rally Day, and the theme is going to be wonder this year. Uh, we're going to look at God's creation through the wonder of all of our senses. We're going to have different stations based on all the five senses. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Salt people, if you guys want to help us run that again, grab me after church or, or send me an email and, and let me know. I have a few stations that I need help with. Um, and then after church on Sunday, later in the evening, we're going to have our back to school party like we usually do. Uh, that's not going to happen at the pool this year, though. We're going to have that over at the Martins house. So thank you to the Martins for opening up their house to us once again. Uh, here we're going to have volleyball. Uh, we're going to swim. And then David's going to cook us some hot dogs. Um, if you guys want to come to that and you want to bring a dish, I sent out an RSVP last week. Go ahead and open your emails and RSVP to that and, and, and say what you're going to bring. Um, again, all youth and family are invited to that. Uh, so we're excited to kick off the, the new school year with this, this awesome day. Uh, I hope to see you all there. Thanks. Cool. And at this time, I'd like to invite our youth forward for a blessing so they can be sent out with Scott to, to dig into God's word together. So come on up, everyone. We'll do our blessing together. There you go. Perfect. Okay, so we have to remember some, some signs that we have to make. So everybody kind of follow me. So let's make a little cross sign on our ears, right? And then a little cross sign on our forehead. So receive this blessing. So as, as you go out and hear God's word from the Bible, may God bless you with listening ears. So go ahead and cross your ears and a curious mind. Cross your forehead as you grow in faith. All right, and I am going to hand you the Bible, and you can follow Scott have a great time. <laughs> well, at this time, we continue by hearing the word of God in Scripture. Today's first reading is from Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 15. After Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery, you would think that the story would end in tragedy. 
Instead, Joseph is eventually able to help to aid his family during the famine. This story from Genesis is an example of how God can work even through seemingly hopeless trials and tribulations. A reading from the book of Genesis. After Judah offered himself in place of his brother Benjamin, Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known <clears throat> to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of the Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years. And there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, and you and your children, and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you love will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from Romans chapter 11, verses 1 through 2a and 29 through 32. In his letter to the Romans, Paul is passionately trying to show that anyone, whether Jew or Gentile, can become a follower of Jesus. For the Jews who choose not to follow Jesus, Paul does not cast them aside. Instead, he insists that God does not reject his chosen people. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are able to sing and welcome the gospel. teaches his disciples that true purity is a matter of the heart, 
rather than outward religious observances. Almost immediately, this teaching is tested when a woman considered to be a religious outsider approaches Jesus for help. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Some of you probably know this popular children's book. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. It was written by Judith Viorst and came out in the 1970s, and it's about a young boy whose entire day is ruined by a series of events. He went to sleep with gum in his mouth, and he woke up with it in his hair. His siblings all got excellent prizes in their cereal boxes, and he just got cereal. Alexander's solution is to move to Australia where surely life is better. The poor kid can't catch a break though because his day continued to get worse. Worse. His best friend demoted him. His mother forgot to pack dessert in his lunchbox. The dentist told him he had a cavity and so on and so on. And throughout the book, Alexander's answer to this series of terrible, horrible, no good, very bad things is to move to Australia. In his mind, none of these things would happen in Australia. When I first read this book as an adult, I remember expecting that by the final page, Alexander's day would be redeemed. That's what I expected. I remember hoping that something would happen that would cause his day to end well. But as Alexander's day came to a close, the bad things just kept happening. He declares, it has been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. And his mother walks in and and says to him, some days are like that. Even in Australia. The end. (laughs) That was it. That was the end of the book. There was no redemption for Alexander. 
Instead, his mother simply pointed out that bad days happen to everyone, everywhere, even in Australia. I thought of this book this week after I read our gospel passage from Matthew because it seems to me that Jesus is having himself a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Just before our gospel passage began, the Pharisees and scribes had been to visit Jesus and they were scrutinizing him about the disciples' lack of discipline when it came to purity rituals for food. Jesus actually snapped back at the Pharisees and called them hypocrites. That's how the scene was set for our gospel passage today when Jesus decides that he's going to teach people himself about what is actually important about food rituals. And I do believe Jesus had a little attitude here. The Pharisees had just tried to put Jesus in his place, and he's not having it. So he kind of turns his back on the Pharisees, and he starts to teach the crowds. He says, what defiles a person, what makes them unclean, is not so much what you put into your mouth, like these Pharisees would say, but what comes out of your mouth. And Jesus is getting a little feisty. He's publicly correcting the Pharisees right in front of them. And then his own disciples come over and they speak up and they say, Jesus, did you know those Pharisees were really offended by what you said? So we've got the Pharisees and scribes who are criticizing Jesus. We've got his own disciples that are more worried about what the Pharisees think than the crowds. And then the disciples go on and act like they don't even understand this little parable from Jesus. I imagine that by this point, Jesus has had it up to here with all of this criticism and opposition. In other words, Jesus is having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. And then he goes to Tyre and Sidon, a region that was on the margins, both geographically and culturally. It was a region inhabited by people that were considered inferior. And it was here that Jesus is approached by a Canaanite woman. So think back with me here for a minute. Way back, way back when the Israelites left Egypt, they then wandered through the wilderness for 40 years and God eventually brought them in to the promised land of Canaan. Well, guess what? Canaan was already occupied by, that's right, the Canaanites. So unsurprisingly, there's this bad blood between the Canaanites and the Jewish people of Jesus' day. Now that's a little history lesson there. So come back with me to the gospel passage that we read and, and imagine Jesus, a Jewish man, walking through Tyre and Sidon and being confronted by a Canaanite woman. Jesus is the Son of God, yes, but he was also very human. And you know, this passage shows us Jesus' humanity. He just had to deal with all this criticism from the Pharisees, from his own disciples, and now there's this historic enemy of his that's coming up to him and shouting at him. But he did not answer her. He gave her the cold shoulder. He ghosted her as if she did not even exist. And then he snaps. He belittles her. He calls her a dog. And that's not a very good look for our Savior, Jesus. I wonder, when you are having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, what kind of person are you like? I know what I'm like. I'm grumpy. I want people to just leave me alone. My patience runs thin, and I snap at people. And that's what I see happening with Jesus. He just had to put the Pharisees in their place. His disciples aren't getting anything at all. It was just one thing after another. Now Jesus is walking through Tyre and Sidon, this place that was charged with tension between Jewish and Canaanite people, and he snapped. Even Jesus had bad days. 
And that's pretty much how this children's book ended. Alexander's mother simply walked in and said, bad days happen, kid, even in Australia. Good night. That's that. That was the whole lesson of the book. But this is where our gospel passage departs from this children's book. Unlike our little friend here, Alexander, redemption is always on the horizon. Jesus had bad days, yes, but that is not where the story ends. I know for sure every single one of us in here has had a day or a week or a season of life that was defined by one bad thing after another. Let's say you get into a car accident, and then your insurance company is being a jerk, and then your AC unit breaks, and no one is helping you, you're not getting good sleep, and it's 108 degrees outside, and on and on. It could be a bunch of those little things adding up, or maybe it's just one big thing that came into your life like a wrecking ball and ruined everything. It's just a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day or week or season of life. So what are you going to do about it? Jesus says that it's not what comes into our mouth that defiles, but what comes out. And what comes out of our mouths is filtered through the heart. His teaching is, of course, about more than things that we would just literally eat. It's his teaching encompasses all of those things that come into our lives, all of those things that could influence our day, our week, or our season. Little things and big things, good things and bad things. And with all of that input, it's easy to get overwhelmed. When things kept piling up on Jesus, he got a little testy. Pretty rude and snappy, actually, to the Canaanite woman. He let this historic enmity between Canaanites and Jews prevent him from, from seeing the person in front of him as a human being. And what changes the story is when Jesus begins to practice what he had just preached, what we heard in our gospel lesson today. It is not what comes into our lives that defiles us, but what comes out. And what comes out is filtered through the heart. The story changes when Jesus shifts his focus from having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day to focusing on this person in front of him. The story changes when he sees the Canaanite woman as a human being, pleading for mercy for her daughter who is tormented. The story changes when Jesus filters this encounter through his heart. And he says, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The good news for us today is that the story does not end with a bad day or a bad week or a bad season of life. Not for Jesus, not for the Canaanite woman, not even for us. Jesus' death on the cross, that could have been the end of the story. But instead, Jesus' story became the ultimate story of love. His resurrection conquered the power of sin and death so that we too can rejoice that our story will never end with a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Our story is wrapped up in Jesus' story. And we can put our faith in him that we too will one day share in that new life together where bad days will be a thing of the past. All sickness, all brokenness, all sinfulness will be behind us. And we will rejoice wholly, completely, and eternally with our Savior. And for that, we say thanks be to God. Would you please rise as you're able, as we sing, Healer of our every ill.
We join people of all time and all space as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lifting our voices and turning toward God, let us pray for the church, the earth, and all who are in need. God of wisdom, guide all your people in observing what comes out of their mouths. Help give all your people the courage to realize it's not what figuratively goes into our mouth that makes us great. And give all your people the strength to pour out their hearts and souls with kindness and love to one another. Hear us, O oh God. God of peace, please bolster the spirit of those entering new chapters in their lives and those reviewing a very familiar chapter as well, especially those who have or are returning to school. Be with the students as they embark on new adventures. Grant the teachers the wisdom to not only guide those students down their paths, but to help them make it an enjoyable journey. And help all of us to do what is right so we may dwell on your holy hill especially those students and teachers here at St. Peter's that start their week of school this next week and those St. Peter youths going off to college. Hear us, O oh God. God of mercy, be with all those that have been and will be affected by natural disasters the world over, especially those affected by fires in Maui, British Columbia, and Spain, and those affected by Hurricane Hillary on the Pacific Coast. Guide your people through these tough times and allow them to use it as an opportunity to support one another with love and care through seemingly hopeless trials and tribulations. Let our hearts honor you. Hear us, O oh God. God of grace, bless the poor and oppressed, sick and bereaved, the lonely, and all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, especially Pat Erickson, Carol Scherer, Ken Tate, Agnes Haley, Sue England, Darla Elam, Jan Wilde, Jackson Dodgen, Peg Schroer, Ronnie Hopper, Dylan Travis, Cheryl Turner, and for those we name now either aloud or in our hearts and minds. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace. As you finish sharing the peace with others, please be seated as we present our tithes and offerings for the mission and ministry of God's church. And our offering, offertory today is our handbill choir. They had a handbill camp this summer, and this was one of the pieces they offered.
invite you to rise for the offertory hymn. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and together proclaim, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. And we give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and he blessed it, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, In this cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Make us bold, merciful God, to address you as our Abba, as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We receive communion by intinction, so you'll receive a, a piece of bread that you'll dip into either the cup of wine or the cup of juice and consume. We will begin in the center aisles down the middle, and then the outer aisles will go out through the narthex and down the middle. If you are gluten sensitive and you would rather have a gluten-free wafer option, uh, let one of the servers know. And if you would just like a blessing, um, just cross your arms across your chest and we'll offer you one. Come, all is ready.
I invite you to rise as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, loving God, for the holy nourishment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now into our homes, our communities, and the world to share your goodness with others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. God, go forth refreshed by God's word, renewed in your relationship with Jesus, and ready to follow the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our way into the week. Peace through the hands and feet of Christ. <laughs>